for our uh, solutions for remote collaboration in design and manufacturing. So this is a weekly Q&A that we're going to be doing for uh, the next three weeks. So if you want to join uh, next week, it'll be at the same times. Uh, and even the week after, if you want to share this with perhaps some other coworkers or even CAD manager, someone uh, that you think would benefit from this, uh, please feel free uh, to share those registration links so that they can get signed up and get their questions answered. Uh, so this is a follow-up, like I mentioned. Uh, we did a deeper dive webinar uh, last week. Uh, you will all get links to that previous webinar and any of these webinar recordings that you are attending uh, automatically. They'll be delivered in a few days, so just keep that in mind. A couple of things I do want to remind you, just some webinar basics as we get started. Uh, you are in listen-only mode, but we are doing Q&A the entire time. That's the whole point of this type of presentation is to uh, make sure that you get your questions answered. We have individuals from support to installation um, and everywhere in between. So any type of question you have, feel free to use the Q&A panel uh, to ask those questions and we will do our best to answer them real time. So you'll be hooked up with a specialist uh, in the background, they'll answer your question. Uh, and we're also gonna have a lot of time at the end. This is gonna be a little bit shorter than our previous webinar if you were on it. And that, and the point is we wanna do that so that we can answer as many questions as possible. And we also have a deeper dive into uh, a particular topic uh, this week that I think you'll all enjoy. So uh, with that, let's get started. Uh, so my name is Luke Mahelsik. Uh, I'm a technical marketing manager here at Autodesk. And one of the first things that we wanna do is just do a really quick review of what's going on from an agenda standpoint. So we're gonna talk uh, really quickly about how you get access to your software in all the different ways you can. Uh, we will then talk uh, about uh, accessing your vault. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, fusion lifecycle and shared views. And then our deeper dive is actually going to be on fusion team today. So, uh, so that'll be probably the meat of today's presentation. Uh, and then again, we have some time for Q and A at the end. Uh, so if you didn't ask any questions before uh, the end of the presentation, make sure that you have those ready at the end. We would love to uh, answer them. And again, just ask them as we're going, uh, even if it's off topic, just maybe a challenge you're running into right now uh, and someone can get you um, directed there. So the very first thing we're gonna do is talk about how we get access to our software. So Autodesk account uh, is your home for everything Autodesk. This is where you're gonna manage your profile, uh, your products, your users. You can even do payments here if you want. Um, and you're gonna get to that by going to manage.autodesk.com. And some of the things that you can do here is you can view products uh, that are assigned to you. You're going to be able to download and install products and updates. You're going to be able to request a home use license uh, for multi-user and maintenance. I'm going to talk a little bit in a little more detail on that in a second. Uh, you can assign user access. You can view reporting. So all kinds of stuff here. So if you haven't been to your account, make sure you go to manage.autodesk.com. So if you happen to be on a multi-user license or you're using maintenance licensing, you do have to do uh, an extra step. And this is, again, in the account, and this is where you request that get home use license. Um, this is for a home use computer. And when you do this, um, this is gonna give you that additional license that you have access to uh, as a part of your multi-user uh, or maintenance licensing. So uh, so make sure you check out your account. Lots of stuff to do there. And again, I'm keeping this kind of high level. The details for this are in uh, our previous presentation. So make sure you check that out whenever we get the link if you want really specific details. Uh, but that's going to be uh, where you go for that. Um, the other thing is if, if there's things that you're just looking uh, to do, there's lots of different places um, that you can go to uh, inside of your account. 
So uh, you can obviously go to the Autodesk Knowledge Network. Uh, virtually everything we're talking about uh, when it comes to uh, licensing is available on uh, the AKN. So make sure you check that out. Uh, there's also an admin community there too. So if you happen to be uh, a CAD administrator uh, and you want to be able to understand uh, what's happening with the, uh, the roadmaps or anything like that, uh, make sure that you check that out. Um, so make sure you, you log in, check out your accounts. If you haven't done this already, um, there's lots and lots of information there. The other thing too we wanna to talk about, um, if you don't have, uh, or if you don't realize maybe you have access, uh, we have this new extended access program. And the extended access program uh, is free commercial use of our cloud collaboration products all the way up until uh, May 31st, 2020. And, and the idea here is we know that there's a lot of people that are new to working at home and maybe you weren't necessarily prepared for this. Maybe uh, you, you kind of got you know your backs up against the wall realizing I need to be able to collaborate and you're already at home. Uh, a really great way to do this is with our uh, cloud-based collaboration products. So uh, the ones that are included are uh, Fusion Team, BIM 360 Docs, BIM 360 Design, Fusion 360, AutoCAD Web and Mobile, uh, and Shotgun. Uh, so uh, there, you're going to get links, uh, and, and some of the folks uh, that are helping me today with today's presentation might be posting those uh, in the chat window for you and in the Q&A windows for you. So uh, if you do want the specific links, uh, there is an AKN article uh, that talks all about the extended access program uh, for cloud collaboration. Uh, a couple of things to note, you, you see that note at the bottom. Uh, this is not about uh, converting you to a customer at the end of this. Uh, if that happens, great. If it doesn't happen, that's fine. We just wanna make sure that you have access to uh, the tools that you need to collaborate online. Uh, when you do use the uh, extended access program, uh, you will get some emails that uh, are automated. Uh, that's because this is essentially a trial experience, uh, but at the end of that trial, there, there's no need to convert. Um, and we're actually looking to uh, minimize and or eliminate those just to make sure that uh, you stay focused on the work uh, that you get to do uh, each and every day. So that's the extended access program. Uh, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Davide, who is going to talk specifically uh, about home use license again. He's going to keep it a little higher level than last week, but just wants to make sure you know the basics for how to get started. So, Davide, turn it over to you. Thank you, Luke, for the introduction. Um, so, again, I'm Davide Mortillaro. I'm a senior technical support specialist at Autodesk, and I will give you a high-level technical overview of how to set up your licenses for home use. So the way you set up your software for home use it very much depends on the type of license you own. Um, so if you have a single user license, you can install and access your software regardless of where it is installed by simply using your Autodesk credentials. If your single user license is part of a maintenance plan, a second installation on a computer is allowed for home use already. Uh, for multi-user subscription or network maintenance plan, like Luke was mentioning, uh, you have three main options. First one is to use a virtual private network to connect to the network where your license server is already running, let's say your office network, then you can use your software as normal. Second option would be to use the license borrowing feature. This option allows you to borrow a product license from the network license server to use the software for a specific period of time while your computer is disconnected from the office network. Um, this license can be borrowed for up to six months, um, unless it's restricted by your CAD manager, so in that case, we recommend consulting with the, your CAD manager. Uh, finally, it, you can request a home use license, and um, that's basically an, an additional installation for the license you already own, which is either a multi-user license or a maintenance plan license. Um, and this installation can be done, for example, on, on an employee's home computer, in addition to their existing installation, uh, let's say they're on their office computer. Finally, for token flex uh, customers that are under enterprise business agreements, um, we have more or less the same options as per multi-user. If you're using a VPN, for example, tokens will be consumed as they are today. Um, if you're borrowing a license instead, 
tokens are consumed each day the license has been borrowed and until the license is returned or until the return date is reached. Um, a final option for this customer is uh, a public facing server. So in this case, um, in setting up a public facing server, the user is responsible for securing the server and all usage that occurs. And also the network license reporting service and needs to be installed on that same server. Uh, that being said, um, as a token flex customer, a token flex customer uh, if you'd like to pursue this option and need help, feel free to, rob to log a support case and we'll be, we'll be happy to help. Um, some other users may also be interested to know if and how virtualization for other software is allowed. Um, so the ability to virtualize Autodesk software uh, depends on what product you're using and the license that is associated with it again. So what can be virtualized? Basically, all software that is under a subscription with single user access or software that is under an enterprise's business agreement can be installed in a virtual environment. And in addition to this, also server-based components, let's say, for example, Vault Server components and the Network License Manager can also be virtualized. What cannot be virtualized instead is all those applications that are purchased under a multi-user subscription or a maintenance plan. Um, as, per uh, as per virtualization platform, we don't really recommend a specific solution. However, we do advise to refer to each product system requirement page for product-specific virtualization nodes. And with that said, I'll be passing it out to our host. Thank you for your time. All right, so uh, this is Brian Shannon here. Let's talk about a couple of other options for those people in the audience that may be using Autodesk Vault. Uh, whatever, whichever flavor you're using, uh, there are a couple different options that you have in terms of uh, connecting from your home office. So the first one, as uh, a couple slides ago, we talked about a VPN connection. So Vault being a client server application will need to connect to your, uh, your server, your Vault server, and it's probably on campus or on um, it's, it's residing at uh, the facility. And so what you could use is a VPN. And of course, we don't recommend any one. They're all pretty good nowadays, but you will need to um, VPN in. And then when you work with Inventor and your Vault client from your uh, remote location, uh, some best practices there, because there can be a bit of a lag over a VPN, we suggest using a, uh, a method of uh, do, a, do a get or check out of everything you might need to work on. This might need, uh, this might mean you have to work with your peers if you're collaborating on a design and take certain parts of the assembly or some of the drawings. But we recommend instead of uh, the, the back and forth, uh, depending on the connection that you have, uh, just do a get, do a checkout, get what you might need for that day or a couple of days, and then check in at the end of the day. The other option would be virtualization of the complete desktop that includes not only the vault client but the uh, the cat applications as well and you can do that you can uh, virtualize the entire desktop it's also known as a vdi and uh, follow the uh, the procedures and the rules that we outlined in a, a couple slides ago but it is one of the other options for you so if you are um, a, a user a cad user a designer talk with your it talk with your cat administrator about options for that it might be better than uh, going and having to spec out a, uh, a machine at home just having a uh, a virtualization of that machine might be the way to go. The next option would be cloud hosting. And cloud hosting doesn't get around all of the issues, but it is one of the other options, especially in the case of Vault. Uh, so you could um, host it uh, inside of a cloud. You still will have um, to configure it correctly. And we have resources on the next slide on, on exactly how to do that, the, uh, the ins and outs and things to know. So uh, we have some traction here. We have some uh, customers, we have resellers that have done this. So take a look at the links uh, that helps you put your right step, right foot forward. And finally, cloud collaboration. So if, if none of these are what you want, we'll be later on in this webcast talking about Fusion Team and uh, and shared views. We'll talk about what's already out there. And the good news is you might already be um, be eligible. You might already have it at your fingertips. So regarding VPN, some things to take into uh, consideration. 
the speed of your uh, remote location, the speed of your connection, that will determine how you work with VPN. Um, also take a look at the speed of file transfer. To help things out, talk with your IT because there is the ability to enable file compression. This helps uh, VPN and it helps uh, the, the day in the life working with uh, Vault and Inventor any of the other CAD applications. Um, there are also considerations for the ports that you might need to enable and open up for communication. So two links right down here at the bottom, using Vault remotely and the virtualization best practices. Uh, these are the, uh, their knowledge-based articles. They're tried and true, and uh, they'll, help you, um, they'll help you out with uh, working remotely with Vault. Uh, build. All right, so the next session, our section, uh, let's talk about um, Vault and then what happens beyond Vault. So in um, within Autodesk, we have a solution for a PDM and PLM coupled together, and this is known as Vault PLM. So we take all of the ability that we have inside of Vault to check in and check out um, a variety of different CAD applications. It's not just for Inventor anymore, but all of the, uh, whether it be uh, the AutoCADs, Navis, Macs, Revit, we can check all that information in and then extend that to a tool like Fusion Lifecycle. And this is our PLM solution. Now the advantage here is that is completely up in the cloud. So we don't need VPN, we don't need to do anything. You could actually just work there for all of your process and um, an extended enterprise level management. What this does is it bridges together all of the things that uh, a customer does and a designer does uh, during the day. So all the version control, the CAD being directly inside of the in canvas within the CAD application and all the support, but linking up the bill of material change, new product development and any other process, including quality and warranty and suppliers and, and extending that. So that's the, that's the true value here of bridging together um, Vault and Fusion Lifecycle. What we see is those two bridge together give you uh, what you need for new product introduction, bill of materials, change management, and, and so on. All righty. Uh, thank you, Brian, very much. Uh, I'm going to take shared views really quick, and then we will get into uh, the Fusion team uh, presentation. So, uh, so shared views. Uh, if you're not sure what shared views are, um, a lot of the products that you have access to potentially already, uh, they have shared views built inside of them. So you're going to see this uh, today shown inside of Vault, but you can run this inside of uh, Inventor. You can run this inside of AutoCAD. And essentially what a shared view is, is a, um, it's a link web link. So you can view this in a browser. You can view this on a mobile device. Obviously you can view it inside of the native applications and it allows you to share a view of your data so whether it's coming directly out of the vault or out of autocad or inventor with suppliers customers the shop floor and and it's not just a a view of this it's a collaboration tool so uh, it allows your customers to mark up and make comments ask for things to be changed. It allows suppliers to let you know that maybe those uh, components don't exist anymore and they have a, a new component they need to swap. Uh, and it also allows your shop floor to ask questions perhaps uh, for how things are going to be uh, assembled. So a couple things uh, that it does is we can right out of Vault automatically generate some of these shared views. Uh, and the cool thing is these things, uh, they, expire after 30 days by default. So you don't have to worry about these floating out in space uh, for a really long period of time. Uh, and then once all of that information uh, is consolidated, you can open this back up in your native application. So uh, this example you see here on the right-hand side is just looking at this with the Autodesk viewer, which is right up on the Autodesk website. So if you wanted to use uh, that as a way to view it, you could. In all of those, comments that are made are all organized in a single location uh, so you can look at all of that information have it all consolidated uh, the great thing is there's zero install it, this just runs uh, in a browser or again in the native application and it really allows uh, folks on the design and engineering side to collaborate with people in a really easy way. You're not sending emails back and forth or screenshots or any kind of 
uh, static image. A, a lot of folks use PDFs to do this sort of thing. This is highly collaborative. You can section these things. You can uh, measure, mark up, explode, rotate, zoom, pan, you name it. Uh, when you collaborate, you can also eliminate some of that too. So if you don't want people to be able to measure, let's say you don't want them to attempt to reverse engineer it, because uh, keep in mind, there's no real 3D data here. It's just an image. Uh, you, can, uh, you can minimize or take away some of those capabilities so that maybe they can't see inside of the object or measure uh, that particular object. So that's shared views. Make sure you check that out. You, you do have access to this inside of Vault, inside of Inventor, inside of AutoCAD right now to help you collaborate. So that's kind of a high level review of everything that uh, we covered uh, in the previous webinar. And what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna take a deeper dive into uh, a really specific topic and we're gonna talk about Fusion Team. So we're gonna now uh, switch some screens here. So just hang on for a second. Uh, and Andreas is gonna walk you through that. Thank you, Luke. So can you see my screen? Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. So I've prepared a couple of slides about collaboration with Autodesk Fusion Team and Autodesk Inventor. My name is Andreas Ernst Wagner and I'm working as a designated support specialist at the Enterprise Priority Support at Autodesk. So uh, the content uh, is basically taken from the known bullet points from last Tuesday, but I go a bit deeper into the details. What software you are entitled through your contract has been already covered so far. How to access the software, how to use your design data, especially inventor design data, and ways to collaborate with others. So let's start with an overview again about Fusion Team. What is Fusion Team? Fusion Team provides a central workspace in the cloud for your projects. You could roughly compare Fusion Team with one of the general cloud-based storage providers like OneDrive or Dropbox. However, Fusion Team provides much more functionality for CAD data and projects than other tools do. You can use Fusion Team to create projects, add collaborators to your design projects, share, manage data, view 2D and 3D designs, on a browser on any device. Mark, review and commands design. You can also use the, make use of the project calendar and track project updates. So when we focus on the setup of a Fusion team environment, there are certain steps to consider. At first, you need to sign up and sign in into your maybe company Fusion team hub. You need to prepare user machines. A project manager needs to create Fusion Team projects. You can collaborate. You need to invite people, collaborators to specific projects you uh, think it's useful for. You, can, uh, you need to add inventor design data. And after that, you can add new files. You can edit existing files and share all these amazing things I've talked about. So let's go to the preparing uh, user machines. We have already covered the extended access program for cloud collaboration uh, products for free commercial use until 31st of May, 2020. And depending on what subscription you choose, you will either get a personal or a company hub of Fusion team. If you are a single user and you've already subscribed to Fusion 360, for example, you got Fusion Team included. However, it is managed as a personal hub. If you're a company or a single user mainly collaborates with externals, you can also subscribe to a separate Fusion Team company hub. Beside features, the difference between a personal and a company hub is a personal hub goes with the user when they leave a the company. The company hub belongs to a company is user independent and all stored data remain as well. So for services like Fusion Team or uh, other software, they can be accessed through, through the Autodesk account. 
as usual. So could we clarify the Fusion Team entitlement and can proceed with the software requirements. What you need for Fusion Team is a browser which supports WebGL. See, most of the known browsers do that, like Google Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, etc. You need then the desktop connector. The desktop connector is a small tool that integrates a data source with your desktop folder and file structure. So to say the desktop connector connects the user desktop and the Fusion Team Hub. You can manage files in the data source through the connected drive, also called Fusion 360 drive, just as you would any other folder on your machine. The data exchange between the desktop connector and the Fusion Team Hub happen, happens constantly. And of course, you need a CAT application like Inventor Professional, preferably, and AutoCAD Mechanical. So to get the desktop connector install media, you need to log into your Autosk account as a contract manager or software coordinator. The easiest way to get to the download is to go over all products and services, look for Fusion Team and to click on Access Now. You'll immediately land on your Fusion Team Hub. Once the Fusion Team Hub is loaded, click on your Autodesk account profile picture and on the expanded menu, you find the download link for the desktop connector. Alternatively, you can also use the direct link listed in the third point if you'd like. So I'm always a friend of small demos and I'd like to show you how you can uh, proceed with the steps I have described. So accessing Autodesk Fusion Team and installing Autodesk Desktop Connector. The first step is to go to manage.autodesk.com. This is your Autodesk account. You can log in by your credentials. And as explained, go to all products and services and look for your Fusion Team entitlement. By the way, this is an included Fusion Team. So that means it is assigned to my personal hub. So you land on the Fusion Team uh, site. Here you can see the install desktop connector for Fusion to download. Just download it and execute the installation as an administrator. For those who have to take care of a larger environment, you can also package this small tool and deploy it to your installation base. Good. That's it so far. Installation completed successfully. And let's move forward. So now the machines are ready to use. And there are a couple of rec recommendations before you start from my side. Make sure all collaborators are logged into the desktop connector with their personal Autodesk account to ensure they have access to the Fusion Team Hub. Especially for Inventor, you should think about if your design data shall be in the current file format or if specific files can be created in a newer Inventor release, leveraging the AnyCAD capability. Users should also be aware of that only the data set upload by desktop connector ensures references are maintained. So in general, uh, you should define a process for adding files, for editing files. Um, you face definitely the same challenges currently when you are working with the Windows Explorer. This is uh, nearly the same only that you work with one of our tools with Fusion Team connected with the desktop connector. And if you like, you can also add inside the Windows Explorer the property columns, a local state and version. It's quite useful sometimes to compare the state between the Fusion web interface and what's currently going on in your local workspace. Good, we are getting closer to be productive with Fusion Team. Next step is to create a project for our inventor design. Log into your Fusion Team Hub and click on Create Project. If you already know what folder structure your inventor project owns, you can also create folders from the new dropdown. Once you've set up a Fusion Team project, 
checks the sync between Fusion Team and the desktop connector. So let's have a look on a small demo, how this looks like. So here you can see the desktop connector and the taskbar. I am logged in as a project manager. If you find it useful, give your users a small hint about the animation is currently starting. It describes the basics of how the desktop connector works with Fusion Team. Hubs can have projects, cat data can be added by dragging and dropping, and users can continue to work offline as well. So, in the next step, I'm accessing on my local workspace the Fusion 360 drive. You can see here all my hubs are have I have access to. Once you have accessed an hub, you can see the projects as folders. So it's the same view you should have on the web interface of Fusion Team. I'm currently creating a new project. It's called Collaboration for Fusion Team. I add a picture as well to be more recognizable. Good. Switching back to the main page, here you can see Collaboration with Fusion Team. And this should also be here on the local workspace. I'm going to create two folders, one for AutoCAD Mechanical and one for Inventor, just to demonstrate how you can add data and how you can share data. The same, the synchronization test, you can say, will be appear on the web interface. So, so far so good. Quite really easy steps to create a project. And let's move forward. Now we have our project and need the collaborators for. The project manager can add participants by clicking on invite. Just use the email, user email address. So it's really an easy process and let's have a look on a demo in, in short. What I'd like to highlight here on this slide is you have here two roles available, editor and viewer. If you intend that your collaborators should be able to edit files, use the editor role. The viewer can really only viewing things. He is not able to edit something. So let's start with inviting a Fusion team members. You need to access the project itself. You can either use the project details panel to manage members or you go directly to this tab project members. Click on invite, paste the email address and choose the role what you'd like to have. And if you like to remove certain collaborators, just click on this people icon and you have removed the collaborator as well. Good, now it's getting really interesting. How can I add inventor data for my design to share with others, to collaborate with others? What you definitely should use is the Autos Desktop Connector to provide existing data sets. This is definitely my recommendation. You should also make sure all file references are properly resolved. I know it's quite hard sometimes to have a large inventor design under control that uh, all referencing files are resolved, but for a data consistency, it is uh, tremendous to have a really clean data set. So from the workflow side, at first, you should open your design data on the current location uh, to check if everything is resolved properly. If there, are repair, uh, if there are missing references, you need to repair them because the same, I would say, bad data set will came across into Fusion Team and this won't be fun at all. Then you can start to copy the entire design folder structure and maybe you have shared locations like maybe the content center library folder you should definitely take with you. Then you paste the entire folder structure into the Fusion 360 drive by just using Control and V. 
And during this process, until the desktop connector starts to copying and pasting the file into the Fusion GSX drive, you need to select the uh, inventor project file. So let's have a look on how this could work. Providing a project data sets on Fusion team by inventor professional. Good, what I have here is the jet engine model. It opens properly. Everything has been resolved without any missing references. It's located on my C drive and I just copy the entire engine. I switch back to my in, uh, to my Fusion team project, which is replicated on my Fusion uh, in my desktop connector. And here's the point, uh, the desktop connector is asking for the existing inventor project file to maintain all the references. I select it and click on OK. And the desktop connector is starting gathering references and pasting the entire folder structure into my workspace. And it's now locally. It takes some time until it has been uploaded. And when we go on the Fusion Team web interface, we can also check if the model came across. And when we have a look on the parts folder, it looks really excellent. Every single part came across, has been uploaded. And you can see it takes um, maybe up to 15 minutes depending on your internet connection. What's also interesting if uh, Fusion Teams recognizes all the subcomponents, usually it does, but if there are still files missing, it could be a, a different result. So meanwhile, I've switched to my collaborator, Andrew, on his Andrew's view. And of course, he should receive the same view on Fusion Team. So, as well, the download from the entire dataset has also been finished and my collaborator Andrew can also access the entire dataset on his local machine. So what I'm doing right now is to copy the path of the chat engine IPG and connect my current inventor project with this project file. Or just pasting to make it easier for me not to navigating through all the folder structure. Here it is, just selecting and open. And so far, so good. What you should check if you do this the very first time, if your locations are properly pointing inside the Fusion 360 drive. You should also be aware of that your library folders should be included in Fusion 360, not hosted outside. Good, then let's uh, check the model. If the model will be loaded properly or if there are missing references. The desktop connector is leveraged and now the entire model should come up. And it looks quite okay until now and here we go. So when you have a model or a data set inside the Fusion 360 drive, you can recognize this by, this is a cloud file by this small cloud icon. And you see that this data set is hosted on Fusion 360 drive. So the next interesting point, how do I edit files once couple of collaborators are involved. So editing a file on the desktop does not check out and log the file in Fusion Team. This is quite important, but to be honest, it is nothing new. When you have a look on maybe other third party um, cloud-based collaboration platforms, they work all on the same way. Therefore, Autis Vault is definitely a valid solution that you have at least um, something you can recognize that a file is work in progress. When you work with Fusion Team and the desktop connector, you need to create a process. For a quick approach, I work with checkout folders. 
So the workflow is to create checkout out folders for each collaborator is a potential editor for the data set. You should be aware of and you should have a good communication what Fusion team is providing by the commenting and by the chat functionality. Um, you should be aligned with your teammates when is uh, someone editing a file. After you have clarified, you move affected files should be edited to the user's checkout folder. And the file move is executed in Fusion Team. The only reason why you're doing this is when you would move, do the move on the local uh, workspace, it says always a delay. So when you do this on Fusion Team, there will be, uh, there won't be a delay and other users can see it, the change immediately. So the move, uh, move affected files to the origin folder after you have edited everything and uh, will also be conducted on a Fusion team. So also a small demo about this and let's see how this could work in practice. So looking on my workspace, this is a blade needs to be edited. It doesn't expect the design requirements and here is the local stage of my uh, design version 6, 3 and 2 and the same view you can check for the Fusion Team web interface. I check both files I need to edit and move it to the checkout folder for my collaborator Andrew. So just doing a quick check if the files have been arrived. Yes, they are and switching over to Andrew's workspace. So here should we get the same picture. As expected, the assembly one and plate one has been arrived and on Andrew's local workspace should be the same. Please uh, be a bit patient. I mean, there are upload and download times if you're using uh, larger data sets. So to make it more easy for me to open this data set, I just pasted the location, uh, copy and paste it here, navigating to the checkout folder and starting the assembly one. So I cut out the change. You will see it right now. I replaced the square by four holes where I can also include a couple of screws that we have a larger change than just C plate one. So everything is fine, just adjust the length of this M6 screw and everything is done. Good. Don't forget to save on Andrew's workplace. And now we will observe what has been changed on the local workspace on the desktop, in, uh, desktop connector side. So I add the version column and you can see here we are on version eight and four for plate one. On the Fusion team side is not, I need to refresh the site and here you can see everything is up to date. And now I am already in the stage to move them back to the origin location. And let's also check this bolted connection. You can see everything has been arrived. Okay, that's it from my side. I guess I'm yeah more than in time. I've also prepared uh, a couple of resources where I, uh, what I used to prepare the slide deck, you can use the Fusion Team Help. Fusion Team Help is split into Fusion 360 because Fusion Team belongs now to Fusion, Fusion 360. And you have still access to the Fusion Team with desktop connector help. You can also use the inventor help. And there is also a great, uh, blog article from Brian Shannon, which is uh, really, really good to get also to an intro with Fusion Team. Okay, thank you so far.
Thank you, Andreas. Uh, appreciate that deep dive into Fusion Team. Uh, what we're going to do now um, is we are going to do a really quick, um, not quick, but as long as it takes, we're here for you, uh, some Q&A. Uh, and, and I have a few uh, questions that appear to be reoccurring questions. And, and I'm just going to ask some of our panelists to, uh, to answer them. So hopefully I'm not putting you on the spot. Uh, but the first one is, uh, so Brian, um, yes. you, you talked a little bit about um, when you're connecting with a, uh, a VPN. Uh, there seem to be a lot of, um, I'll say, performance issues with, with VPN. I was wondering if you could just either recap or go in a little more detail about maybe some of the options that folks have access to uh, to do their best when they're working across a VPN uh, with their data. Sure. Um, so I saw the questions come in. So a virtual private network is uh, by nature, it's a little bit slower. Uh, even us here at Autodesk, we have to VPN every once in a while to get to certain areas on our servers. So the um, if you are working with Vault, uh, a recommendation, and we had a slide in there about uh, enabling file compression, and that's something that Vault can take advantage of. So uh, there's an article on that. I don't know that that helps out a non-Vault scenario, but working with Vault, that definitely helps it out. Um, what working with Vault does is it gives you a the ability to check out, which is basically a get. It's like going in, grabbing everything you need and running with it. And so then working at home, if you uh, have your, you know, your desktop is set up with Inventor and AutoCAD and Rev and all of those file formats, then you'd work locally. It's when you work over VPN, like a remote connection, and the software is actually running on your uh, on, on a machine at work, that's where it will uh, it, it will only be as, as good as, I mean, you could talk to your IT, uh, it might be constricted by the bandwidth that you have at your residence or wherever you're working remotely. But uh, my recommendation was the scenario of you have uh, a home use, you have all of the, the CAD and the, the applications at your residence and it's running on your local machine. Yeah, I, I think you mentioned something where, you know, go do a get and maybe go get a cup of coffee. Uh, yeah, and get yeah. All that data done locally, and then you're going to be running locally. That's correct? Yeah, that's what I would suggest doing. So go do a get. Uh, a checkout from Vault is the same thing as a get. It's a, it's not only a retrieval, but it's also saying that you have it, you own it. So do that. You're right. Cup of coffee, cup of tea. Do that. And then at the end of the day, you're done. All right. So you're like, <sighs> exhale, check it back in. Go and go and send it right back in, and again, get up and go get an afternoon tea. So uh, that's how I would uh, recommend uh, working with with uh, with VPN. Perfect. So I'm going to keep one more question for you, Brian, before I let you yeah. go. So uh, another question came in. Uh, we 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 just talked, did a big deep dive into Fusion Team, and a question came in about the availability of who has access to Fusion Team. Uh, could you go over what those details would be for uh, for subscribers? So for um, PDMC or product data, product design and manufacturing collection, if you are a subscriber. Uh, so let's put it this way. If you are a CAD manager or group manager, or contract owner, take a look at what you have entitlement to. You might already be able to wake up a hub, set it up for your users and start to use this. Keep in mind that doesn't need a VPN. It's completely cloud. So all you need to do is follow what uh, Andreas put um, did with desktop connector, get everybody set up and you'll be up and running uh, within a, a few hours. You could have everybody humming along. So the other option would be is if you have Fusion 360 already as a subscription, which means you already have the ability to have a Fusion Team Hub. And then the third option would be the uh, extended access program, which allows you to get your hands on it. And again, follow the steps that you saw Andreas. And remember, it's not just for Inventor anymore. It works with AutoCAD. In fact, I posted into the question here, um, all the file formats that are supported. So it's it's Revit, the AutoCADs, and, and I'll just leave that there, um, Navis and 3DS and of course Inventor, but Word and Excel, it, that, it, it works with everything. So uh, there's a variety of file formats, even third party. So if you need to work with somebody that has uh, Katia, UGNX, SolidEdge, SolidWorks, Creo, the answer is yes. So go and take a look at that link. You can work and, and, and collaborate with people um, with a variety of different uh, CAD applications. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so so mm -hmm. speaking of AutoCAD, th there were quite a few questions that came in yeah. uh, regarding AutoCAD and it was, you know, it said mechanical, but does it mean all the other? So like Brian had said, uh, anything where you see the word AutoCAD, 
uh, if you were unaware, it's it's pretty much all one flavor now. All the different things are in there. So uh, so it's not specifically mechanical or electrical. It, it, it does any of uh, the AutoCAD. So uh, so just to be clear on that. And then another one came in, uh, and I'll take this one. It was uh, running AutoCAD um, across a uh, virtual desktop, and there were some performance issues. And one of the panelists, uh, Anton, answered uh, that uh, you could uh, try out the extended access um, with AutoCAD web uh, or mobile, perhaps, and see if that would uh, increase uh, the speed and performance because it's, you know, it's designed to work across the web. It's designed uh, to be running uh, on mobile. Uh, so, so that's an option um, if you need the extended access or you would have access to it already if you happen to be on subscription. Uh, I did have one uh, last question, uh, and Devade, I'm gonna ask you uh, this one. And it was a quick question about token flex. And I know we covered token flex, but I was wondering if you could just maybe recover that and give just a little more detail on someone that has token flex, what they need to do uh, to run their software at home. Oh. Yeah, I will be happy to answer that. Um, well, usually token flex, uh, I said, um, users are under token flex, probably they have the possibility to access their um, their software through either a VPN or they have a cloud hosting uh, a solution already in, in put in place by their IT team. So we're talking big customer, probably they have an IT infrastructure that is taking care of access for other users. Uh, I would suggest I, if you don't have a public server available uh, to work with the VPN solution if you already have one because that allows not only to access your data that you may have in your um, your computer on the office network but also to access directly the network license server um, the other solution would be the licensing borrowing and in that case you they may want to work with their CAD administrator because in this type of organization there is probably a CAD administrator that is uh, managing the access to licenses um, especially if they are multi-user license or token flex so in that case uh, they need to work with them also to um, to make sure that token consumption is also in line with their actual usage. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so I just want to do a quick uh, recap and then we will wrap things up. So uh, like we had mentioned, uh, we, we, we talked about a lot of different things today. We did kind of a high level uh, how you get access uh, to your software. Uh, either through account or what Devade just mentioned, uh, if you happen to be a token flex uh, account. Uh, we talked about some of the extended access programs. So these run through, um, uh, oh, I'm totally forgetting the date, uh, but they run through, I believe, May 31st, something like that. Uh, correct. I'll, yeah, correct. Yeah, May 31st. Thank you, Brian. Um, mm -hmm. So they run through May 31st. So make sure if you don't have access to cloud collaboration tools via subscription that you definitely check out that extended access program. That's that's really going to be a really easy way for you to use tools that are, are designed for uh, collaboration. Uh, we did a deep dive into uh, Fusion Team, uh, and again, you're going to see all of that information. That was literally a clinic for how to do uh, Fusion Team. Literally everything you need to do to get set up is in that uh, demonstration uh, that Andreas did for us, so you will see that in the recording when this gets sent out to you. Uh, and as usual, if you happen to need any additional help, if we didn't answer your questions uh, on today's webinar, uh, make sure you reach out to uh, Autodesk support for help or uh, make sure you reach out to your local resellers. We are super uh, excited uh, and proud of the way our resellers have been supporting uh, you through all of this. Uh, a lot of our resellers are doing their own specific uh, remote collaboration type webinars uh, and they are equipped to help you uh, uh, as well. So uh, if you happen to have a really good reseller connection, reach out to those folks as well. Uh, and then finally, there is a, uh, a resource page on autodesk.com. So if you just go to autodesk.com, it shows up on the main page. The link is also here, but it really takes you to all of the resources that you need access to. A lot of the things that we covered, it'll take you to AKN articles, it'll take you to videos, it'll take you to all the information that you need to make sure that you can not only collaborate, Rate, but get access to your software and make sure that you stay as productive uh, as possible. 
So thank you very much for your time uh, and attention. And remember, we are doing two more of these uh, next Tuesday and the Tuesday after. Make sure you check out uh, that page where you registered at. Uh, make sure you send that link to additional uh, coworkers or anybody you think might benefit from uh, a weekly Q&A session. And thank you again for your time and have a great day. Bye now.